to you by our stable of sponsors. Kiura, welcome to weigh in on a Monday morning, the day after jumps racing in this country soared to its highest heights. It was Great Northern Day at its new temporary home at Tarapa. Fantastic days racing there. Andre Neal was on track. He is going to be our co-host today. We are still without Emily Bossom. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. She has more important things to do at the moment. So Andre, one of the most experienced you keep missing out. broadcasters <laughs> in the country. Great to have you here in the Way In Studio. Thank you for all your help, uh, along with Love Racing in the last 12 months, getting us boots on the ground. It must be Great to be the master of your own destiny these days. You go to the race meetings you want, you talk to the people you want to. Um, that must be invigorating to be at the grassroots level. Honestly, you're, really, you're too kind, to be honest. But you, what you know, and I know completely well, is once racing's in your DNA and the people around you, you respect and the loyalty they give you and the hard work they put in behind the scenes and then they have the successes... It's just a, a wonderful industry to be involved with. It's not work. <laughs> never call it work, Mac. No, I agree. Going to the races never feels like work. Let's talk quickly before we get to the racing about your business. So you have your own channels and you go on track and you like to say to the clubs, hey, I'll bring these stories to the people who can't be here. So, totally. You know, the whole world has changed. Where actually everyone can be a producer, presenter now at, at any given time in any place on a racetrack, and I think that's the most exciting thing for the industry going forward. We haven't quite nutted it, because we haven't got in one area, and I think that's really important that we get into one area. So my crusade basically was, we can't miss out on the stories. So I'll go out there in the field, get the stories, get the personalities, get the colour, get the excitement, put that on screen, and then work out what we do with it later. And that, we haven't quite got to that yet. No, we, we haven't. It, it, it's very much evolving. Tarapa yesterday from television looked fantastic. It looked majestic. The sun was out. It was a beautiful day of jump racing, how did it feel being there uh, for the Great Northerns on a different track but with that very rare enthusiasm the jumping community brings to the industry? You've said that in a nutshell is perfect. That industry, that industry together are, are fantastic. They're so vibrant and they're so absolutely into their craft. It's really, really cool. If you tell me it's not like yesteryear, I'm sick of hearing that because that is the truth. Nothing's like yesteryear. No sports like yesteryear with the big crowds. You know, we go back stupid years where the Tiamudu jackpots and all those thousands and thousands of people. That is never going to happen again. But we need to try, obviously. We need to strive forward and get better. To answer your question, a wee bit flat yesterday, but the people were there loved it, and that's the most enjoyable thing because they were right engaged with what was happening, and there were so many stories throughout the day, so many challenges for sale horsemen and horse um, and the horses themselves, and some survived, some didn't, and that that was the beauty of the whole day, really. Maybe the longest race ever held in New Zealand, which wasn't over the hill, the Great Northern Steeplechase yesterday, over 6,500 metres at Tarapa. And should we have ever doubted him? Kiddo, trained by Kevin, not so dummy Myers, makes it another great success for the great man from down there on the neck. From no tip, out wide Donato, Magic Wanda couldn't win it. At the last, it is Kiddo in front, leads by two for Sean Fannin. In second spot, Donato, no tip, Kiddo in front, trying hard in second spot, Donato, and then no tip, followed by the anarchist running on again. But Kiddo, Kiddo becomes a mano. Kiddo wins the Great Northern Steeplechase, Sean Fannin. Quite on Sean, your fourth win in the race, congratulations. Yeah, thanks very much, um, huge thrill. Um, Huge well done to Kevin and everyone at home. It's got a, yeah, I guess everyone at home that knows the horse get a big thrill out of this. He sort of, two starts ago, Kevin said to me, well, we're on the wavelength, we can't do much there, might be the finish of him. And he came in and won that day, and just cut his leading me out. We joked again that it's his last chance, and yeah, sure came in and gave, gave everyone a huge thrill. Yeah, look, uh, talk us about the race and, and how we travelled and how we jumped throughout. Yes, um, he doesn't touch a bit too much, can't go that fast, but probably over this distance he um, they're going a bit slow and he could travel quite comfortably in behind them. And um, yeah, I mean, he travelled um, well the whole way and um, caught the last two in the country there quite well and that sort of kept his momentum up coming on the course proper and he was um, able to sustain that to the line. Superb training effort by Kevin and a great riding effort by you as well, Sean. Congratulations to the whole team. Yeah, thanks very much. Almost comical how good Kevin Myers is at doing these things. Andre, if you watched the Pakaranga Hunt Cup uh, a couple of weeks ago, you would have thought, well, there's no chance this horse can turn the form around. It was 21 lengths behind them, and then you go, 
that's just what Kevin Miles does. If you saw his form back in his early days, you'd probably think he's got no hope as well. He, I think he had, like at his third start, he was in a Grand National and, and was placed fourth. Then he had issues with tendons. They had a stem cell uh, problem or stem cell operation. Uh, they didn't think they had a racing proposition. Uh, as Sean led to, uh, led to there, that they were even thinking about not racing him anymore. So he's just risen to the to the task. And what, that's some ride. He's just followed Aaron Kuru and just said, that's the horse I'm following and I'll just stay there. We're in a blessed era for our jump jockeys at the moment. We have the Shawns, Fanning and Feeling. We have Aaron Kuru here. We have Hamish McNeil, who was good yesterday, finishing second in this race as well. Uh, it is a remarkable era. Second horse, really good, Donato. Uh, Magic Wonder was the favourite. Just cost herself by rattling a couple really hard. Uh, one of them, Aaron Kuru, lost his uh, stirrup regained it again but she took too much punch out of herself and, and no tip got to the line looking a bit sore he was very very tired by the time he got there so willing to forgive on him but can't take anything away from the winner kiddo who is the only foal of kitty o'reilly so no little brothers to kiddo floating around brothers or sisters a typical kevin myers story and bred by warren kidd oh, the late warren kidd to okay. be honest. so he didn't have the pleasure of actually seeing the horse race uh, but he's a wonderful, he, he was a wonderful man and, and loved his horse racing, so that was really c crucial, you know, a cool story as yeah, well. As, as I said, if anybody else pulled it off, apart from Kevin Myers, you'd be like, how did that possibly happen? We just get so used to it these days, it almost seems normal. Congratulations to everybody involved with... Just the... on that, Mick, sorry to be interrupting, George Simon... Wasn't uh, he on form yesterday? 6,500 metres, 32 jumps as opposed to the old Northern, which was 6'4 and 25 jumps he was. And he, and look, he is a good mate of mine and he was on fight. The maiden steeplechase, I think the, there was a jumper, jumped it quite slow and that's jumping like a, a nudist trying to get over a barbed wire. I mean, he, a great he's... barb for a five-horse steeple, maiden steeplechase. I said, George, you're on fire yesterday. He said, it's the Northern. And that's simply a great answer. It's the Northern. We all rise for the Northern. Look, it, it... He's, he's such a talented guy, George. He's almost like one of those genius rugby players where I'm sure he goes to some Wednesday meetings and he's like, this is NPC rugby, I'm, I'm just going to do my job here. But on the big days, he and T. Lee, you're just blessed to have those sort of guys who can tell all those stories because those kiddo becomes a man -o. They stay in your mind for another decade. So I, That's I, I, enough praise for George, please. No, exactly. No, come on, move exactly. on. He's not the man he used to be for about 30 <laughs> kilos. Exactly. Let's, let's talk about the Great Northern <laughs> Hurdle because here's another race which proves if you're going to win major jumping races in this country, it helps if you're a trainer or a jockey if your name is Sean. Here's Abu Dhabi. And the leader is Abu Dhabi. Says to the two favourites, if you're going to try and get me, you'll have to go now. And uh, Sean Phelan does so on uh, Kajino on the outside. Still there, Ned Wynn, but this leader's got about two lengths to spare at this stage. Down to the second to last. It's Abu Dhabi, the leader, led by two from coming after it. Kajino being popped the question. Ned Wynn and then Banks Road. It's Abu Dhabi at the last. Two lengths clear. Kajino's rattling home on the inside. Abu Dhabi wants a race to the outside. Kajino on the inside, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi and Hamish McNeil, very, very brave ride. He's won it. He's won the Peter Kelly Bailey's Great Northern Hurdle. Second over was Kajino. Well, congratulations. That uh, must be a heck of a thrill for you. Yeah, huge for Andre. Um, you know, like I said, out on the dice, it's a really hard game, the jumping game. Put a lot of hours into it, so what a big one on this is great. Feels like all your family's around you. Your father's up there on the uh, winning dice. Uh, you got your young jockey, Ace uh, Lawson Carroll, going off, I believe, in the weighing room. Yeah. And, of course, your jockey, who's been part, of, part and parcel of Team Clotworthy for so long. Yeah, that's right. Kim um, bred this horse, raced the mother. Um, yeah, I think she won, won, won her first start here, actually. And... Uh, so yeah, he's been a sort of a in the making type of jumper. He, you know, like Dad said, he sweats all the time and he yeah, worries a little bit. And that's not really like you want to see for horses that are going out of this distance. But uh, yeah, he made it today. It was a great ride by Hamish. You know, we decided to put the pressure on those uh, good horses a little bit out and, uh, and it worked here. Yeah. We always ask this question, but where does a win like this rate for Team Clock really? Oh, well, it's right up there for us. You know, it's, it's one of the better runs and, and my father's always been involved with jumpers and. So great having your family around you and, and, and staff and everything. So yeah, that's it's right up there. Would you rather score the winning try and take the Ranfley <laughs> Shield home to County's Manico, or would you rather win the Great Northern? Win the Great Northern at the moment because my body would be no good for rugby anymore. So yeah, no, no, the Great Northern's a great thrill.
Yeah, great story there. The clock is, of course, Kim, who is the father of Sean, um, has been selling jumpers for a very long time, sold jumpers to the Queen Mother. Of course, he's met the late Queen. He never had a chance to sell horses to her, but um, they're a fantastic family, the Clotworthies. And look, it's, uh, it's, it's a win for them, which shows perseverance. This horse is a 24-star maiden, Andre. I'm not sure I'd, I'd have the, the patience for a 24-star maiden, but they've found the right niche for him. Time's been his friend, and Hamish McNeil got that inch right yesterday because he took the sprint out of the other horses. With regards to the longevity of horses, I think it's a gem in our crown, to be honest with you. If you can have horses that are not as good on the flat as some others, they've got another path, and I think that's really crucial. And the Cossacks are classic. You know, jumper of the year, the Cossack, I think had 36 starts for two wins on the flat, but they still persisted. Um, and then he went into the hurdling cape, and I think he won seven of his last seven. You know, it's an incredible story, that story. And these horses just get a second life, if you call it something else. It's fantastic for everybody involved. Remarkable, I think Kajino headed Abu Dhabi around about here. I'm pretty sure it did. Hard to tell at that angle, but Abu Dhabi kept on going. Maybe the outside of the track was slightly better. Not bred to stay at all by Harada's son out of a McGinty mare, believe it or not, called Tunzi, who ran ninth in a Wellington Cup and won four races, including one at Tarapa about 20 years ago. So they now have a horse they can do things with. There's only seven. Could probably hurdle Andre, maybe even steeplechase till it's 10 or 11. Um, Good fella, Sean Clockworthy. Emma's obviously got a background in the inventing horses too, so they have had horses in recent years from good sprinters up to horses winning Great Northerns. That, that proves they're horse people. You've done a bit of homework there, haven't you? Tons Talking of us through that. But that's you, you always find out a story within a story. So if you look at Kim Clockworthy, whose great mate is Keith Hobb, Keith's Hobbs' number one horse was McGinty, you know. There'll be a wee bit of a laugh there and a whiskey by those two to say, there you go, a McGinty, I, I a we, McGinty mare. I don't think you want whiskey. Well, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> but that's a cool story going. in itself. Kim and Keith Hobb will be sitting down having a whiskey, having a bit of a giggle that they've just, obviously, between them, somehow managed to grab the Peter Kelly Bailey's Great Northern Hurdles. <laughs> How good. There was also some great flat racing there yesterday, but let's get back to the steeplechasing and the, and the hurdles. Hurdling or jumps racing in this country looked to be in big trouble uh, maybe two years ago. Then in May we had very small fields, some race meetings not getting off the ground. The community is there. I'm not sure whether we need to reshape the season. I get the feeling it almost starts a bit too early. We struggled for numbers on those firmish tracks. Um, the way the weather is now, maybe we can compartmentalise it into a, a smaller time frame. But when you see that enthusiasm, when you see those horses who, as you mentioned, didn't have careers on the flat, Andre, and you see the people who will also be breaking in horses, trialling horses, training horses, it's so crucial that we still have this part of our industry. And I, I know there's been some talk about it, not having the Great North or the Grand National down south or not having lots of different things. Days like yesterday proved to me it's just crucial we do whatever we can to keep, get, to keep jumps racing as part of our therapy community. We've been beating the same tune for a long time, to be fair. So th we, as a collective group, we just need to sit around the likes of the Bruce Sherrick, the Bruce Sherwins of the world and just say, how do we have a path going forward? Because we all can't be wrong. Kevin Myers, you know, outstanding contributor to the year, one of his first things was he loves the amateur riding, he loves the jumps racing, those people that are involved are the people do all the work behind the scenes. We can't lose that because if we do that, we lose a big part of our industry. It just can't happen. We had that crossover yesterday between the flat horses who liked it wet and flat horses who were coming out of the winter campaigns up against the group one horses coming back. That was crystallised into the feature mile and that was won by crystallised and here is a young man heading places and Ace Lawson Carroll and a first win for the new partnership of Aaron Tata and Danny Walker. Electronic tackle now by Predefer. Field of Gold is running on and so too is Amarolina. Through the centre, crystallises right there as well. Bullybrook battles on and true enough on the inside. Don't know where to look here. At the 100 metres, it's Predefer. Crystallise giving plenty on the inside. Crystallise and on the outside, Predefer. Back in behind them, true enough. Crystallise and Ace Lawson. And Carol get the money. Second over was pre deferred. Third photos between. He finally gets the mile, does crystallise, probably on a firmer track than anybody would have expected. Ace, who's doing a really good job, popular young horseman, had a good win behind Omar Rockaby on Saturday at New Plymouth.
Plymouth as well. So he's had a strong weekend. That'll only gain him in confidence. Well done to Danny and to Aaron. Their first training success together. Whether Crystal Eyes can keep that form, keep going, probably depends on how wet the tracks will stay. Although yesterday, probably better than we expected from him on a better track than we're used to seeing him on. Some of the Group 1 horses in behind were wearing the tangerine. We caught up with Sam Burgesson to see what they made of some of the big names in the open mile. Let's assess the runs. Firstly, uh, Pre de Ver. Yeah, really tough run. Sort of got stuck wide, but um, stuck on really well. Um, so he'll go to the Matamata Cup and then back up a week later into the Liver Mile going well. Sounds like that's been pretty much an A plan all along. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the old boy's coming on long well. He um, always tries his heart out. So, yeah, all going well. That's the plan. I guess the head scratch out of the race is Amarillinia. Yeah, sort of loomed up like it was going to do something and, yeah, very disappointing late. So we'll get her home and just reassess her. Some head scratches out of the race and some trainers who will be looking for improved performances heading forward if they're going to be factors in group racing over the next month or two. What caught your eye out of what was a, a very unusual open mile that sort of threw everybody in there together and said, you work yourselves yeah, out? There's a, quite a few positives out of the race. Charm Star spoke to Lisa Ladder, who obviously talked to Wiram and Pin, very happy, got home really nicely, early days. The frustration these trainers have got in terms of programming is the weather. I mean, North Island's about to sink, you know, there's going to be rain a week next week and in the Waikato area and the Hastings and actually getting the horses to races has just been such a task for these trainers and so it's been very difficult to plan. So Charm Star, who they're very happy with, will go to an open 2000 or open distance race at Hastings on the second day and then obviously looking for the Livermore Classic, that's their aim. I thought Starry Bill's run was really, really good for a horse that's going to have, probably have a really good summer as well. Uh, no, Joshua was really happy with Henny Parra, wouldn't, looking at that myself, I wasn't so convinced but he knows his horse better than anyone. Well it's half of those cup winners coming back, isn't it? They're yeah, always exactly. going to be outpaced and exactly. they're always chasing. I thought True Enough was really good too. Yeah. I thought it was a confusing race. I'm not sure if it's going to stand up as a form race but uh, I think a lot of trainers here would have gone home thinking, okay we got that out of the way. Exactly. We're going to need to improve a lot here if we're going to be a factor up against some of the big boys and girls coming up. Well, a horse who had a fair old drought between wins took out the major sprint yesterday. Mr Universe hadn't won a race since December 2019. That's pre-COVID since Mr Universe had won a race. He finally gets it right at Tarapa in the sun yesterday the 250. Sam I am Susie the leader. All out though. Here's Mr Universe coming after it. Battling on on the inside. Manrico. Sam I am Susie. Mr Universe strode up on the outside and on the inside is Manrico. Sam I am Susie with a fight on the outside. Mr Universe will get the bob in though and Mr Universe and Sam Spratt take out the second from Sam I am Susie. If you told punters back at Awapuni on December and in December 2019 when Mr Universe came from last to blouse them out in the field he won't win another race for nearly three years and 35 starts. They might have thought you were a bit simple, but it's taken a while. He's a seven-year-old near Andre. He's been part of our racing landscape for a long time. I would not have thought it was that long since we've seen him win one. I reckon he'd be a cool horse around the stable as well. I'm just picking that he'd be one of those they let the youngsters ride as well as that. I oh, just added that, um, Pam Gerard really happy, and Michael McNagg with Harlech. Uh, and we'll go to the, the second, second day, day Arrowfield. as long as the track's decent. That means it, may not, really that means it may not be going. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That but track. they're really, really happy, like best they've ever felt him for some time. The nice horse also back with Sam I am Susie. Here's Tony Pike with his opinions on the runner-up. Well, the start, obviously, of a long campaign. What were your impressions of that first up run? Yeah, happy enough with the first up run. Um, probably just looking at her through the week. She's, she's always going to benefit from that run. and. Um, just with uh, Pacey Park sort of coming up three deep, just put the pressure on probably a touch early and she's just knocked up late and she'll take plenty of improvement from the run and uh, looks like she's in for a nice uh, nice season. His report was positive as well? Yeah, he was really happy with her. Um, so he probably wants slightly better ground. Um, just off the ride, he said dipped and dived a wee bit in the track, but uh, obviously hopefully we'll be starting to get some firmer tracks uh, at some stage going forward and uh, yeah, no, she should be in for a very good season. Very early days, but have you sort of got something here marked in that uh, mastermind of yours? Yeah, look, there's about three or four different options uh, or paths we can go down. Um, there's plenty of nice stakes races for coming up through uh, October and November. So we'll just uh, get it through today. Obviously, track conditions are going to play a part and uh, we'll sort of confirm uh, where we're going probably in the next week or two. Well, one leg down into the Hawks Bay Triple Crown. Let's jump forward a couple to the Livermore because some of those horses yesterday may potentially be contenders because we're not sure 
Dark Destroyer or La Creek will be here for the Livermore. We know they're going to be here for the Arrow Field, which is now less than two weeks away. If we have them in the market, it skewers things. pre defer good enough yesterday that is obviously going to be a factor. Pinarello is the interesting horse, Andre. We know Pinarello is very, very good. The Queensland Winter Carnival form has been outstanding. He's beaten Dark Destroyer in the Derby over there. I think he's the horse on that page who jumps out at me the most. And of course, they're not scared of being fresh, are they? No. They've learnt. What won both no the race at Pukekohe and Incredible. the race at Eagle Farm. Missed that man or two race. Yep. You know, like that's huge, really. Nothing really sticks out to me at the moment. Well, if you don't know if La Creek's going to start or Dark Destroyer, it's impossible to bet into. But we'll monitor that. That's what Way mm. is for, and obviously for sure. lots of other media places. But interesting old Livermore classic at this stage. And of course, Imperatrice is not in that market. She is the favourite for the Arrowfield. That's Tarapa yesterday. Well done to Butch and his team and to everybody involved in the jumping community. It was spectacular to watch. And as mentioned, if you wanted to win a major jumping race this winter, as a trainer or a jockey, I'd help you if your name was Sean. Both of them taken out yesterday, one by Sean Fannin, one by Sean Clotworthy. Before that, both Grand Nationals, Almost every major jumping race in the country outside the Wellington Steeples and the Pakaranga Hunt Hurdle were taking out by the Shawns. It was the winter of the Shawns for the jumping community. On the other side of this, we head to Rickerton for listed racing down there in the south. by our stable of sponsors. Yeah, it's your show, it's your chance to weigh in every week if you want to nominate someone you think is one of the heroes of New Zealand racing, a star of the week, maybe a star in a longer time since. It's your chance, just email into us here at Weigh In and you get your chance to win a $100 bet courtesy of the tab. Thank you, tab people, that organised by loveracing.nz, our new partners, and a very much an important part of us here on Way and Heading Forward into 2023. Uh, this week's winner is Karatiana Aranui, and he has gone for Patrick Campbell, one of the legends of Central Districts Racing there in the Hastings region. He said, Patrick has been doing the job so well for such a long time. I cannot disagree with you, Karatiana, so thank you for entering your chance every week. Think about it on a Saturday. Get your email and tell us who your hero or heroine of New Zealand racing for the week is. We head south to Rickerton for the first of our Saturday meetings where there was black type racing, a race named after the great near herself in Canterbury Bell. Here's the Canterbury Bell stakes and a rarity, a listed maiden winner and some of the most famous colours in New Zealand racing. The Lib Patanga colours, here's Opie Bossom producing a peach in the sea bell. Dior and Rhonda Wood, one kiss running on, it's mistaken, one kiss, one kiss going to mistake from Rhonda Wood, Kiki Mora late, but one kiss is strode to the lead of the 150, trying to rally mistake the inside, Kiki Mora late, I choose you out of the pack, it's one kiss and Opie Bossen for the Canterbury Bell, and one kiss won it, one kiss up for second, perfectly suited through the middle, mistaken Kiki Mora in photos for third, and then came He played the stalker, did Opie Bossen there with one kiss, and the Tavachi Philly, gone from being a maiden one week into being a listed winner and one of the favourites for the thousand guineas. Let's find out just how good she is. Opie Bosson did the riding. He also rode a very good filly at Taupo on Friday. Good morning, Opie. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, hey, how are you? Can you hear us, mate? Are you with us? Yep, yep. Great stuff, Opie. Uh, tell us, how good is one kiss? Because you had the option to draw also ride I Choose You. You chose the maiden. Did you know she was this good? Yeah, we always had a high opinion of her. She's trolled up really nice and I um, was surprised she got beat first up, actually. Um, she just um, got, got a shuffle at the wrong time and um, still been an OK race, but um, I knew the improvement was there and she's um, shown us a lot. OK, she's now been to Rickett and she's now proven herself at the home of the 1,000 guineas. You would suggest on breeding she should be better up to 1,600 metres. Is she a true 1,000 guineas horse? I 
think she is. She's a nice, big, strong filly. Um, yeah, but stepping up to, to the miles can be ideal for her. Is it important to have had a spin around Rickerton? It's quite an unusual track. It's very big, very open, very roomy. Does that experience out of Saturday hold her in good stead for the campaign? Um, yeah, well, it's good to have a run around there, but she only did uh, down the chute and that, so she's still got to run around the bend in the 1,000 guineas. So, but um, it's, it's, it's a nice big track, and most horses handle it. She is now $10, Opie, for the Barnswood Farm 1,000 guineas. She rode... A filly, a debutante on Friday at Taupo, who absolutely hacked up. We're going to look at Stella Splendida. She cost a stack of money at the Caracas sales. Here she is in the Tiakau Tangerine. Things probably didn't go perfectly, Opie, but with a horse this good, albeit in a nice field, it simply didn't matter. Yeah, no, she's, she's very classy. Um, she's showing us a lot at home and... Um, the plan was not to rush her too much early and just, just try and get a bit of cover and get her to settle. And, and she's got an amazing turn of foot. Um, she, she put them away pretty quickly. Um, I'd like to see her on a really good track. She's just got that that action, that uh, open track will um, be ideal for her. As best you can at this stage, one's had two starts, one's had one. How would you compare these two in racing styles and potentially what sort of hope they would be in a race like the 1,000 guineas Um, But two different types. Um, one kiss, is you, you definitely think she'll run, run out the mile for the 1,000 guineas. The other filly, she's quite quite quick. She just needs to come and just needs to settle a fraction. But um, she's got a lot of class about her, so it would be a, it's going to be a hard pick. In a situation like that, Opie, is it a case that you eventually make that choice or does Mark Walker and David make that choice for you? Um, how does all this work out? Because so many people, for example, last year at the Karaka Million, they want to know what Opie's riding. Who decides what Opie's riding? Um, oh, we all talk together, but it's, it usually comes down to me. Um, and uh, I just try, <laughs> try and uh, get the right one that's going good at the right time. Well, you do more often than not. You also went to Rickerton for an earlier race, Navalha, on Saturday. Look, probably not a horse who's going to be in the same class as some of the horses we're talking about, but you had your hands full here. You got down to the inside. You had to come across heels. You managed to balance the horse up beautifully. I would have thought this is a horse, Opie, who's going to have a lot of fun on the South Island. Yeah, he's, um, he's always shown a lot. He's just um, a little bit unlucky in a few of his starts, and... We got a beautiful run on Saturday and uh, got out to the clear at the right time and he, he put them away quite easily. Um, he'll be out carrying uh, 60 kilos as well. It's not easy. Mate, you were in the feature sprint. You rode Burgundy Rose and she was run over late by an old mate of yours, Summer Monsoon, who you won the stewards on more or less this time last year. He's had a go at hurdling since. He's back to Rickerton, which he seems to love. Was it a case of Summer Monsoon being a little bit too classy here for Burgundy Rose, or do you think the mare was potentially feeling that 59 kilos in the last little bit? Yeah, the weight probably got through her a little bit, and uh, there's a bit of interfe interference there with the, um, the loose horse. But um, some of them on soon, he, um, I think he just waits till he gets to record and before he <laughs> decides to do anything. He's a funny old horse, and he just seems to love that shoot. All right, Opie, you've, uh, you're, you're seeing things well. You're second on the Premiership. I'm going to ask this, even though it's a ridiculous question, just so we can clarify things. There's no chance you're going after the Premiership. There's no chance you're saying, look, we've got a new baby at home. It's too much work for me. I'd rather be travelling around the country. You're not going to be chasing the Premiership, are you? Well, I'll put it this way. If it's, if it's, uh, I'm on close enough, I will have a crack. Really? Well, there's something I didn't expect to hear. You're, uh, you're by the way, $5.50 and from $21, Opie. Um, We'll see how that develops as things go ahead. Tell us about your uh, your other girlfriend, Imperatriz. Uh, what sort of improvement or what sort of development do you think we're going to see between a run on a very heavy track last time out on the Tarzino to the Arrowfield in under two weeks? And do you think Mark Walker would go to the well again on her if, in fact, Hastings remains heavy? Yeah, we, um, we're just praying that uh, they don't get too much rain and the track does come back a bit, but... Um it doesn't look promising, so um, wouldn't want her to be running on a very heavy track over a mile. OK, so would your advice to the punters, not that it's your job to have to tell the punters what to do, but would it be just to be a little bit careful on her if, in fact, that water table remains quite high in the Hawke's Bay? Yeah, 
but um, well, she, she, she clearly didn't have it the other day, so uh, it had to improve a lot for her to um, run out a good mile anyway. Opie, the weigh-in viewers are probably sick of me hosting this show and looking at my big ugly head, and Andre's probably not helping much either, to oh. be honest. Uh, when can you potentially do some babysitting so your wife can come back to work? Because we would like her back in the seat as soon as possible. Well, she's telling me today that she's re ready to go back next month, and I was like, I, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> Well, I've got bad news for you. We need her more than you do. So, mate, I'm giving our love to Em. I hope things are going well with little Honor, the new addition to the family, and she's sleeping well. And, yes, we'll monitor the uh, the battle between Emily trying to get back into here and you trying to get on more planes to try and win the Premiership. Thank you for joining us this morning, mate. Uh, thanks for having me. Opie Boston in great form. And look, we have Open a book on it. <laughs> we, have, we have missed having Emily here, yeah. but um, it's going to be an interesting battle. She wins. They've got a few things to juggle. She wins. She's <laughs> she, back. She will win. She's back. She's the brains of the operation. <laughs> She's back in October. Um, <laughs> interesting choice for Opie. It's a really developmental bunch of three-year-old fillies because Lickety Splitter we'll see later in Australia, clearly. Uh, Maven Bell's in the paddock, so it won't be in the 1,000 guineas. Best seller was really good at Hawke's Bay. It, it feels like anything could happen to the top ten in this group. Do you think he talks like a trainer as well? You know, the, she was doing so well at home and that sort of stuff. There's all he's so intimate with them. It's you know, he's got both roles almost, oh, and they ask him for his advice, and he's got to pick his rides and sort of. Like I he's think he's right the best. I think he's the best horse Tiago's got. I, I think yeah, totally between, good between call. David and Mark and obviously Sam and all the team and, and, yeah. and the people who run the barns, but having a senior rider who can get on horses and get off them and say this is a little bit this, a little bit that, massive advantage. Yeah, sure. And they'll be really lucky. They've had Troy Harris and they've had Danny Elba. They've had a lot of that. And that's a business model they've put together. But um, yeah, when you get Opie in a serious mood and he's dialled in and he's very dialled in at the moment, I'm not sure he can win a premiership. I'm not sure he'll be interested for that long. And also the other thing is he may end up in Australia riding some Saturdays there. But um, but it's, it's great to see him this dialed in. It's amazing what new bills will do with uh, Honor and Emily. We're looking forward to you getting back on the show as soon as possible. Also out of Rickerton on Saturday, we had the cup trial for a very informed Lance Robinson. He trained Burnview to win this. Also took out the last on the card. And here's a horse who six starts ago, this is the horse outside the leader in the cup trial, six starts ago was winning a rating 65. Here it is now, having won five of about 16 starts, and a horse who is, well, that's all the leader, my apologies, it's the horse crossing heels now. A horse who is very much on the pathway to major open handicap success. Burnview comes at Campionessa and Burnview won it. Burnview beat Campionessa right on the line, third across Rain Man, then came Jack Knows Best. He had the pleasure of spending some time with Lance Robertson and his, uh, and his beautiful wife uh, at Greg O'Connor's birthday about a month ago, Andre, and I'll tell you what, they're good people. They're good Cantabrians, they're proud Cantabrians. They'd be enjoying this, knocking off the Northerners there. Yeah, no, that was a great performance over yeah, the concluding very stages. Horse. Yeah. Very, very improved horse. Good uh, to have Tina Komanagi back too. It is. Did a bit of... Uh, Sam wins back at the moment Jumped too. in the forest with her, or did some trekking. Yep. And Kelly. Uh, Kylie Williams, uh, Rico, who was 15 during the week, so... What's the family's great? growing. Wow. Happy, happy birthday, Rico. These things move on, don't they, very quickly? 15 years of age. It's, it's a great... This makes Kelly, uh, Kylie looks a bit old. Well, she's looking pretty young. She um, is. Great to see this North-South Island battle. It's, it's really hard to beat Tiako when they bring those good horses down, but I think the place that they can do at the Southerners are in those staying races and in those handicap races. So it's uh, going to be an interesting battle over the next couple of months down there in the Deep South. Let's head to the Naki, where they had a delayed intra-provincial. It was... A race which was supposed to be on last month. As it turned out, for no loitering, it didn't matter. He's 10 years old. He turns up rain, hail or shine. A remarkable horse, a story of perseverance. The old horse with the young rider as Kelsey Hannon continues to embellish her career. No loitering, he's fighting like a caged tiger and just ask me, is flying all of the way. All of the way, no loitering has got it from Setters and just us. Well done to trainer and co-owner Ian Marks. They've had this horse its entire career. It's won 10 races now, 250k. Started its career on Valentine's Day 2016. Didn't win a race for 16 months, Andre. Then won a couple of races, then had a 19-month break. Now, I'm sure I'd be absolutely jack of a maiden who's gone about three years in between two different campaigns of not winning races. Ian Marks wasn't. And he gets his big reward on Saturday. He gets the resilient award of the year that it then, doesn't he? 
Isn't it great? It is great. Oh, Actually, you mentioned Kelsey. Young, right? Good day at Taranaki for the youngsters. Ace Lawson Carroll. Kelsey, of course, won. Um, Taylor Mitchell, who's a real find. Riding well, road winners both days. And Fay it all won on the day. You know, big Saturday racing, and they're putting their hands up. Admittedly, they all got the claims during their races, but that was huge. That was really good for the youth of the Still going to ride them to win. Another one coming through, one young CL Butler who rides for her boss, Robbie Patterson. Stan was on debut. CL's only had about 10 rides. She had some time riding for... Um, her former boss, Alan Sharrock, she's now with Robbie. She accompanied him to Australia. She's accompanied Coventina Bay around New Zealand. Does a very good job. Here she is with her first career win. Here is Seagal and Stan. A long time away from the races out wide, Hazar. But Stan, Stan does it for the locals and Seagal Butler. Second over Hazar, then Serena Spirit. Good on, Seagal. It's a, a very proud moment in your career. We're looking forward to seeing how it develops for you. Just out of that race, a couple of uh, jockeys hit the deck. Um, Crystal Lindsay and Lemmy Douglas. Uh, I believe a concussion one place, ligaments in an ankle for another. So um, maybe the concussion was... was they, initially they thought Crystal had hurt her ankle, but not too bad there. She has a slight concussion. I believe Lemmy ligament damage yeah, in Yeah, so ankle. they're a bit gutted about that because they think it breaks better than have a ligament damage. So um, Janelle Miller texted yesterday and just said he could be out for a wee while. Uh, they're a wee bit gutted, as mentioned, because bones breaking heal better than ligaments. Apparently. One of the great things about... You're a sportsman, you'd know that. Um, it was a long time ago now. <laughs> okay. um, uh, one of the great things about you being on the ground is you get to see these stories develop that a lot of us who are studio-based or in, stuck in Auckland where there's no racing at the moment don't get to see. One of those stories came out of race four at Otaki on Thursday. Really special, really special, very close to me as well. Uh, this is Eddie's dream who is trained, of course... Uh, in Trentham uh, for the late Eddie Carson so uh, he's just done a superb job this man Un unbelievable uh, I think he's had 20 starts over three years so it must be three years since actually T Lee will probably bring his magic and bring this horse home to be fair 100 metres to go, he's home today and Dennis Stewart's going to rack up a winner here, Eddie's Dream and Matt Anstin great ride, Maggie's clan second, then here comes trouble we need a shot, next up so, so Eddie trained at, at, at Trentham for a long time. He was a friend of yours, and um, sometimes we lose these people to the industry, and, it, and there's so much going on in the industry, it's easy to, to forget their legacies. When you see their colours and you hear their names again, it comes flooding back, doesn't it? Oh, that was fantastic. And Dennis has been such a loyal servant to the Carson family in, in every respect, not just looking after the horses. I see him on the lawnmower outside their house all the time. He looks after the farm. He's looked after the racing side of things. They've been really resilient and kept going, which is fantastic. He was a seven-year-old by Z, I think, Eddie's dream. And he, and he raced like a two-year-old. Look at him, he's still green. He's probably got a huge amount of improvement. So, can't, uh, well done, Dennis. That's just really incredible. And I know Angie Bund is names people don't probably aren't familiar with, but I see them most, you know, day in, day out with these horses, caring for these horses. Uh, and to get a success like that, that's just gold. I've, I've got shivers down my spine just talking about but it. Not every and race, I love that. Not every race is the Melbourne Cup, but... Every race win feels like the Melbourne oh, Cup totally, to somebody. Totally. And for them, that was very special. Well done to you, Dennis, and then, of course, to the Carson family. We'll take a break here on the other side. We're going to go to horses who almost are Melbourne Cup horses. We're going to head across the Tasman where there was New Zealand success and the best two horses in Australasia were back in business. by our stable of sponsors. You're watching Wayan, and thanks to all of our sponsors who allow us to tell the racing stories both here in New Zealand and offshore and loveracing.nz. There's heaps more video content on there than what you'll see this morning. Make sure you check it out if you want your racing fix. The big fella, cool sign Mav, very apt at the moment with Top Gun Maverick out for... In the movie theatres, he went to Caulfield where the rains came on Saturday and he did New Zealand proud. Here he is in the Bowery Racing Colours down the outside getting his fourth Group 1, the first for him on Australian soil. Up to Tuvalu. I am Superman chasing both of them. Coolsign Mav just in front and won it. 
Call sign man from I Am Superman. And third was Tuvalu, Dallas Sandpoint. They rolled the dice a year ago, did Team Barry and the other owners of Call Sign Mav. Andre, they decided to go to Australia. It can be a very hard road. It has been totally justified. A $1 million race to Sir Rupert Clark. And I know you've spoken to JB and he'd be stoked, particularly seeing those colours winning a Group 1. Yeah, a lot of stories involved. That's just so much satisfaction. We know we can breed horses and they, they get them from the New Zealand Karaka sales ring and they take them elsewhere and they win. But to have a horse that's performed in New Zealand and then perform in Australia is just special. It's just a magic time. Uh, spoke to John, yeah, John was at home with Laura and the family and they yelled and screamed. He said he was like a... You know, it was. He said it. It was a, when he was a training this horse and and winning Group Ones. It was relief that they got the job done. As an owner, because he's still a ten percent owner of the horse, it was just enjoy the moment, and he just loved it. Had a couple of beers, the wife, the kids all cuddled each other. You know, that's glorious stuff. And I even had a quick chat to Jonathan Riddell because this fella here, Jamie Mott's obviously his first Group One, and he was almost. Riding call sign, call sign Mav in the Cox Plate when John was training the horse. That's how much he thinks of him. He's very much in the, in the mould of Jonathan Riddell. They struggle and struggle and struggle and they wait and, and everything. They've just put so much into the industry. He can see a lot of similarities with Jamie Mott and Jonathan Riddell. And I spoke to Jonathan yesterday. He said the, exactly the same thing. It was really cool. And to see a huge smile on Jonathan Riddell watching that, you know, it's really, really special. So it's really but neat. They're real things. They're real things. Exactly. It is real, but it's well. neat. That's neat. I love uh, it. We, anybody who's been to the Jockey's room knows the guys who battle with weight and the girls to a lesser degree. It's a bloody hard road, we, and you've got nothing but respect for them. Absolutely, like it, Jonathan Riddell at the end of the day is a different person at the start of the day. You know, he can just probably hey, have a drink of water. Imagine you and me being hungry, Andre. <laughs> yeah, it's, not much, it's not much fun. Well, more so me than you. You know, that, that, you just set me up. Then. <laughs> Let's go to the uh, the Turak market because that was a handicap. Of course, he did carry 57 and a half kilos, so it's a hell of a win from him. Here's the Turak market where I wish I win was on the ballot for that race. Ironically, would have got in with the late scratchings when the rain came to Caulfield, but he did not. He remains the favourite for the Turak, which is a couple of weeks away, away from Ayrton and on Thunderstruck. So there's a lot of New Zealand love alongside Mr Brightside on that page. I don't think Mr Brightside goes to the Turak. Cool side Mav, if you think he can back up and win back-to-back -back group ones, which he did this time last year, he is at $15. Lickety Split, who's now called Cheese Lickety Split or something ridiculous because that's what happens when we send our good horses to Australia. I have no idea why. Started in the 1,000 guineas prelude. Here she is, three wide, not handing the track. She's beaten into third, but she was oh so brave. Coming home hard. Boogie Dancer takes the lead, 200 to go. Kick clear, two links in front of a wall. Bonner, Mumbai Jewel, she's lickety split and Sumatra late, but it's all Boogie Dancer careering away and Boogie Dancer won it easily. Three links Sumatra, she's lickety split, then Bonner and behind them then was Mumbai Jewel, Celestial Spirit was Danny so I thought she was very good, Andre. I mean, she, she clearly didn't handle the track that well. Caulfield's a tough place. She was three wide. She didn't give up. Spoke to Andrew Forsman. Bounced out of the race perfectly. It's all good so far for her heading forward to the 1,000 Another games. great story, too. Nick Houston, I get on really well with. It's good, funny how you come luck. across people and you just sort of click. He's one of yeah. those guys. And the, all the Windsor Park team are really cool. You know, we've had a, a lot of social times together. It's really important. But what I like about Nick, you know, he, I think he was the captain of the Hong Kong rugby team. He's got a lot of those mates who played footy over there involved. They'd even know what Group 1 means or thoroughbred racing meant at the time. Now, they're in boots and all. And those are potentially our customers for a long, long time because they've enjoyed, admittedly, a great start, which is not sometimes a great way to, uh, to be no, in the industry because you expect too much here. It is a bad thing. But no, really cool story and just another neat thing that a horse trained here that was racing rail here is, is looking like they can race really well there. And I see Wolverine is probably in another one in that category. The, the crucial factor out of the 1,000 Giddies market is do the Sydney fillies come to Melbourne? In Secret's very good. Zoo Gotcha was excellent on Saturday. Fireburn less likely, but if they come... Um, to Sydney, to Melbourne, that changes the dynamic of that market quite enormously. So we'll see how that evolves as the autumn goes ahead. But she's lickety split. Andrew Forsman saying she handled that beautifully. Uh, also for Andrew Forsman, who's having an excellent spring in Melbourne, we saw Mr Maestro head to Flemington yesterday. They delayed this meeting because it hosed down. Hosed down. 
and they almost thought they might have to call it off. Here he is for Damien Lane in the red and white colours. Another one bred by Windsor Park, this one by Savabeel and Let Me Roar. This is the Derby Trial, and try telling me this horse won't cop the Derby distance. Here he is, Mr Maestro. Mr Maestro, Mr Maestro gets its head in front of Kapakiri, giving resistance at the 100, but Mr Maestro pouring it on late, coming clear, and it's going to be Mr Maestro for Damien Lane, winning it by a length and a half, Kapakiri Major Beal. Distrust Award. Important spring for Andrew Forsman coming off the back of the partnership with Murray Baker. The last thing you want to do, Andre, is start slowly and have people saying, oh, they're all missing Murray. Well, he hasn't done that. He's third on the premiership here. He's already had multiple winners in the Melbourne spring, which is not easy to do, and no one else from over here is doing it at the moment. Um, I think we all knew Andrew could train. He was going to stand up and train, but it helps when you start getting the results, and he's now got a derby contender. I wonder if he's enjoying it. You know, you're, you're I think, I think by you really, yourself is a big difference if you've got somebody. He's obviously got somebody. I've a lot to do with him. I, I, I think he's enjoying, like anybody does when you go out on your own, he's enjoying being master of his own destiny. Yeah. That comes with a lot of pressure. But he's also, he understands Australia. He's, he, he, under, he gets respect from people like Damien Lane. He has good staff around him. Lauren and Mickey Brennan's daughter's over there looking after these horses, and she's doing a great job. There's a new staff member coming on board. He's growing his business, and he's growing it with success, which is really important. Interesting. He's an interesting character. He texted me the other day, I had um, jockey manager of Dylan Turner, and he gave me the best ride in the race, he said, and his text was something along the lines of, if you can please you know, ride the horse, if you can possibly consider it, well, it's like, goodness me, mate, yeah. you just give me the best ride of the race, and please consider it, he asked me. He's, he's got a communications de funny. degree. He understands how to talk to people, yeah. which is really that's important, funny. and that's therefore funny. he's got to be good with owners. He'll make it as a trainer, but I just didn't see this level of success happening quite this quickly with a barn which didn't have that many superstars in it. Look at his split giving him a chance in the thousand guineas heading four, that's mid-October. And of course, Mr Maestro now into the derby. We're talking about good horses here. Let's talk about champions. This one went to Ascot and smashed them down the straight. He came back. It's not an easy thing to do to come from one hemisphere to another. And guess what he did this time? Here's Nature Strip returning for our man J Mac, our man Chris Waller, uh, our man Steve Hansen. There's lots of our men involved in this. And Nature Strip just was too good for them in the shorts. How do they beat him in the Everest? from Eduardo, clear from lost and running. And Nature Strip back on target to defend his Everest title. So he's favourite for the Everest to defend that title. He's already got the invite, of course, the nomination. Now uh, He's 2.1. That's a little bit skinny. Lost and running. Interesting story there. Huey Bowman sat up on the horse for only half a stride. It was minuscule. Uh, I think the horse's bob at the head probably cost it second more than Huey sitting up. He got 13 days. 13 days. Seemed a lot. It's a great race, the Everest, Andre. When they announced it, I was like, eh, am I going to be interested in this? I'm interested now. And I'm more interested because we all love Walla, we all love J-Mac, and I think we all now love Nature Strip. How do we get into it? We need to have get our horses into there. It? I think we were close last year. I think I think there was chat, Andre Vier was going to get an entry at one stage. Right. There was chat the year before Bostonian. It will be a different Everest once a New Zealand horse is in it, but I think there's enough buy into Nature Strip, Walla, J-Mac that that people will have a, a New Zealand feeling about it. It feels this. like New Zealand all the time with Chris Waller and J-Mac over there. We've got that New Zealand flavour all the time, so it just feels like another state of New Zealand. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or is um, it the other way around? He won five, J-Mac, <laughs> on Saturday. Also rode another pretty good horse. He's Animo. Now, this is Animo absolutely hacking up to win. J-Mac didn't want to be outside the leader. This wasn't some cunning tactical plan. He got there by mistake. He said, once I was there, I was on the best horse. He just waited and waited and waited and ran about here. The white gloves started to pump up and down, and that was the end of the race for Animo fans. He was too good, but there is a bit of news after the race. He is maybe the best weight for age horse in Aussie. And there's five Group 1s. Animo went under beat Ice Bath. Hinged in third, Modophilia fourth. It all looks perfect. You go, wow, well, that was effortless. Animo should be favourite for the Cox Plate, which he is at 3.5. Zaki taken out of that race, heads to Victoria next weekend. But here is the part you need to know in case you missed it. Animo came out of the race three out of five lame. Now, had that been on a firm track with concussion being the issue, Andre, you can get over that. You can put him in the pool, you can reshoot him, you can do whatever you want for concussion. It's not too bad. Three out of five lame on a wet track suggests annoyance somewhere, whether it's ligament, whether it's knee, we don't know that. James Cunnings from Godolphin saying yesterday the horse had improved significantly. But as a punter, I don't like backing horses who have any type of issue 
in the highest level races. And I think punters in the back of their mind now will be thinking, Animo, is this going to turn up? Future proof of the TRB gives you a $50 return if you do back him and he doesn't start. But does it make you nervous as a punter when they have an issue? I totally agree. It obviously does to everybody, I would say. But how about the owners and breeders? What are they thinking? They, may, they might even be considering the R word. Yeah. Retirement. I, I think if it was two months earlier, they could retire him to start. They can't now because he won't be able to serve any mares this spring. It'll be too late. True, but so, they don't want to ruin his value either by racing him down the track. No, if he's not, no. And they're certainly not going to run him if he's not right. It's going to be we'll a get a steward report every day on that horse. It's going to be a huge watch, isn't it? Yeah. Because he's favourite for the Cox Plate. He's favourite for anything he heads anywhere. J Mac, as I said, five on the day. The two major wins. It's 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 almost just normal now for these sort of things to be happening. But a great New Zealand success there on Saturday in Sydney. Talking about New Zealand success, we're, we're very proud of what our, our thoroughbreds off the track are able to do. And last year on, on this show, or earlier this year, we highlighted uh, Monica Spencer. Monica Spencer has a horse called Artist, who's a former Windsor Park thoroughbred. Well, she's been at the World Eventing Champs, where this horse, she actually ended up finishing 21st, and obviously in an enormously talented field. Two other Kiwis also finishing in the top 25. And she's a fantastic young lady, very enthusiastic about her thoroughbreds. We have two thoroughbreds in the New Zealand team there. Well done to everybody who helps rehome these horses. Well done to everybody involved in taking our thoroughbreds into that other part of their life. And it's pretty crucial stuff, Andre, because we know that they need to find homes for these horses oh, and they are wonderful. Just horses. done the same thing myself. One horse is going up with a, a young lass in, in the Gisborne area. Uh, and she's told me, you know, it's going to be trekking with people and it's a great wee mate. And this horse who's had a decent life with me is just going to have a super life with her. I could just see it and it just thrills you to bits. I tell you, Nothing better. I tell you what a great life. Opulence. She was a 17-year-old mare, the dam, of course, of Very Elegant. She fold down this little beauty, this little full sister to Very Elegant on Saturday morning. By Z. That is opulence there in the background. That is mum. Sadly, for Don Goodwin and Grange William, opulence passed away not long after this photograph was taken. A wonderful mare who leaves a wonderful legacy. They got the vets to her as quickly as they could. She had a rupture inside, one of those things that happens to horses in nature, and she leaves behind an indelible mark in our industry, potentially with an ARC contestant and very elegant in a few weeks. It's been our pleasure to bring you the busy, busy stories of this weekend of racing here in Australia and New Zealand. Andre? Thank you for coming in. Thank you for being part of the way team heading forward. Thank you for telling racing stories, mate. Just on that last story, foster mother with the young filly of opulence. All, all good. All, all taken care all of. Good, yep. We found a new mum and well yep. done to Opulence yep. for producing Fantastic. a great, great horse. Thanks for watching us here on Way and it's great to have your company with loveracing.nz. They have plenty more racing content. Thanks to Andre Neal. Next week, Bruce Sharrock, the boss of NZTR, is going to be here on the show. If you have any questions for him, we'll put them to him. Get hold of that email address. That aside, have a great week from the team here at Wayne.